Greetings, Sephora. I'm uh, very happy to be sharing with everybody the very exciting course that you're proposing on subjects uh, dear to our heart and the intersection thereof, nonviolence, feminism, and what we've been calling here at Meta the new story and that you have other terms for. So as everyone knows, I believe your course will follow on mine, which is a general introduction to the principles of nonviolence, and then you'll take us on a deeper dive into this uh, subject. So tell us about your course. Hi, Michael. Um, thank you so much uh, for giving me the opportunity to teach at Meta because it aligns so much with uh, how I view nonviolence and the framework of nonviolence as a very broad framework on how we um, can be in the world differently. And I think feminism also has that uh, potential of shifting our meaning-making frameworks. So the course is going to be oriented towards seeing how this uh, intersects with the framework of nonviolence. I think both of them critique uh, both uh, not just physical violence, but systemic and structural violence. And the emphasis of the course is not on understanding that per se, but we will be looking at how they form, uh, how systemic and structural violence forms sort of the background pervasive uh, mechanisms through which we are, in, we are forced to interpret the world in certain ways and forced to deal with others in certain ways. And we don't even realize perhaps that we're colluding with that kinds of violences because it's become so much a part of our consciousness. Um, so we'll be looking at those kinds of narratives uh, in myths uh, and uh, through film and through the theoretical texts um, to understand not only these kinds of pervasive violences, but how to shift, um, as I mentioned, the meaning making framework in order to produce the change. So I believe very strongly that you need to shift the interpretive framework first uh, or have an inner kind of transformational shift in order to produce the change in a more integrated uh, fashion and not just taking action for the sake of action uh, and not understanding the bigger picture. So we're going to try to understand the bigger picture of both nonviolence and feminism and how they connect. That's really excellent, Sephora. And, you know, people often talk about three kinds or three uh, arenas of violence and nonviolence. That is uh, uh, physical, uh, structural, and cultural. So this should be a very uh, in inspiring and uplifting presentation. So I have two questions before. I'd like to know a little bit more about your own background, your research interests, how they fit into the course and, and what exactly are the dates and times? So my background, I have done my PhD research uh, in this nonviolence movement that was one of the first unarmed peacekeeping uh, forces, uh, which is the present terminology. They, did, they just thought of themselves as a nonviolent army and they were called the Khudai Khidmatgar movement led by Abdul Ghaffar Khan. He's also known as Bacha Khan as the frontier Gandhi. And this had happened at the same time as uh, Mahatma Gandhi's movement in, in British India. And it was also an anti-colonial uh, uh, nonviolent resistance. The basis for their formation was more to change their own cultural norms. Uh, and you were pointing to you know, the, the kinds of cultural uh, violences um, that are so pervasive. And I'm calling those systemic violences rather than cultural, because I don't want to focus specifically on one, one culture. But here in this case, the Khodai Khatmatgar literature, which is what I analyzed, and it hasn't been looked at before, their own Pashto literature. So I'm looking at how they imagined nonviolence, especially because they were categorized as a martial race of people. So there was a huge racial categorization associated with the Pashtuns and continues to be associated. Yet they were the ones that created the largest nonviolent army, a disciplined army, which Gandhi did not produce in the same fashion. So in looking at their literature, we will look at some of the women's poetry in this course also, because the women's poetry very interestingly doesn't speak about nonviolence at all. It doesn't mention the term nonviolence. And yet it, it points 
very cogently to the means of creating nonviolent transformation. So that was a huge sort of uh, thing that grabbed my interest. And so I want to discuss that uh, and, and uh, my, my theory about how nonviolence is so prevalent in each culture and each society, but is just not recognized and not given that label. So we'll be looking at some of that. And um, the times uh, for this course will be uh, Wednesday evenings, 5 to 6.30, and Saturday mornings, um, 10 to 11.30. So altogether three hours, which um, seems quite long, but it will not be here. <laughs> I don't think so, because we've got a lot of material to cover, both uh, theoretical texts, uh, some films, um, and also a utopian novel that we will be reading. Um, and amongst the theoretical texts, we've got uh, uh, Lila Fernandez on nonviolence, feminism, and spirituality. We've got uh, Judith Butler. We've got Veronica Gago, whose text uh, uh, is, has a beautiful title, Feminist International, How to Change Everything. And then we've also got some texts and films that don't really necessarily fall into the category of nonviolence or feminism immediately. And um, especially Robin Wall Kimmerer's text, uh, Braiding Sweet Grass, which looks at indigenous ways of uh, viewing plants and how they're interconnected with human life. So that is a the kind of shift in cosmology that I'm going to be emphasizing throughout the course. Um, and, and I think she she does it so beautifully um, in her in her text, and, and we'll be discussing that also through the utopian novel that we read. That is truly excellent and inspiring, Sephora. I'm very, I'm very glad to have, be a part of it. And I look forward to working with you and what should be a very uplifting and enlightening experience for the takers. Yes, thank you, Michael. I'm looking forward to uh, our discussions and hopefully very stimulating uh, uh, and um, ways to change. I uh, hope we get a lot of discussions and projects, the final projects aimed towards how we can actually uh, create change in the world. That's what it always comes down to. I do want to make clear that the course is not just directed towards women uh, and men are equally welcome because um, we'll be looking at patriarchy, racism and imperialism uh, as the three main forms of systemic violences that in this course at least. Uh, and patriarchy is a violence also towards men and to other genders. And so the whole category of gender will be under analysis uh, through the idea of patriarchal violence and, in, and racism uh, and uh, imperialism or colonialism, which are categories that still exist for us and affect everybody, even if they're not victims or they don't think they're victims of racism or patriarchy. Um, or colonialism. It is uh, certainly true in nonviolence that someone who abuses another is suffering as much or more as the victim of that abuse. So that fits in again very, very well. It's a good model. Yes, thank you. Am I looking forward to good discussions that will, uh, we will uh, stimulate hopefully. <laughs>